motion and second has been received. All in favor? Aye. <laughs> All opposed? Motion passes, and we will move on to our committee <coughs> agenda. Our first item is a regional hazard mitigation plan presented by Mike Bothman. Um, Mike, please fill us I in. I have some additional materials here. Okay. This is the plan. If you'd rather not read 118 <laughs> pages, yeah, I have a two-page summary, executive summary. And Thank you full, very much for that consolidation. <laughs> the full plan is also on these USB drives, so you have the access to the whole thing. Oh, awesome. <clears throat> Guess I should have saved one for myself. Okay. You want one? Yeah, you've got one. Thank you. Okay, I think everybody has one. The um, regional hazard mitigation plan, the state of Kansas went to a regional planning system, and Wyandotte, Johnson, and Leavenworth counties are under Kansas's division of things, part of what they call Region L, or most, more commonly the metro region. And uh, we were the first ones to volunteer to try this out. Uh, Johnson County's hazard mitigation plan, every county had one. Johnson County's expired this year anyway. So this actually in May, so we went ahead and got a plan together. We met <clears throat> because of the size of the groups in western Kansas, they would have met all together as one group. But here we met by county because of the, the, the number of entities that we had to meet. There's a number of goals here that are listed that are part of the plan. It's FEMA's organization and FEMA's way of doing things. But the whole plan was put together by a state representative or by a person on the Kansas Department of uh, Emergency Management. And she typed it and did all this. Um, there are some editorial things that probably need fine tuning. But basically, the plan has the goals and analyzes all of the different possible disasters. And if you see on the next page, we've given them all a rating of one to four or zero to four, and uh, the only hazards that were left out were volcanoes and tsunamis. So we have assigned a series of numbers. They all pretty much agree between the three different counties. The write-up is the same across the three different counties. One's a little higher here because they use uh, past events as one of the criteria. Johnson County had tornadoes more recently than we did, so they got a higher rating slightly on that um, than, than Wyandotte County. How much weight in this weighting scale that's built into the FEMA system is all part of uh, how it's designed and the, the way they do this across the country. So you can see our, our highest rate according to this is from tornado, and we move on down from flood and so on. So the entire plan is here. You have a summary and you have the uh, full plan on those USB drives. And we're just asking for the commission's approval. Questions? Move for approval. Okay. Motion and second, please call the roll. Roll call, Phil Brooks. Aye. 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 All right. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Bachman. Um, item number two is a grant application regarding Wyandotte River Trails Project um, submitted by Joe Connor. Mr. Connor, are you still presenting or have you passed the baton? I have passed the baton. Uh, Terry Brickeisen <laughs> is going to present the items from the Health Department. He is the, uh, just recently named as the Deputy Director and has taken over the day-to-day -day responsibilities of the Health Department. Congratulations and welcome. Thank you. This grant is an educational grant and so it would be to uh, drum up business for the trails and drum up business for our out, outside exercise and to get people enthused about doing it. Uh, this grant will hire a regional planning consultant, somebody who will come in and do health education kind of activities to get people excited about their health and specifically along the, uh, the levy system. 
Is there <coughs> is there a match for this grant? No, we have. Uh, this won't cost us anything. We do uh, have staff time devoted to it in the grant. Twenty percent of Wesley McCain's uh, uh, time will be devoted to help the consultant. But no, there won't be any <coughs> match for this. Sir, please call the roll. Yes. Aye. 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 For item number three, we have another grant application regarding healthy weeding. <laughs> Thank you. If we get this grant, then we will be reducing the obesity and diabetes of Wyandotte County residents who are health department clients. So we don't want to lose any of our clients that are coming through the health department uh, as far as giving them an opportunity to access healthy um, lifestyle behaviors. And we are partnering with the Y on that. And so we will be doing what is the buzzwords are called motivational interviewing of our clients to see if they are really wanting to do something uh, as far as physical activity goes or if they kind of want to do something. And so there are programs for both of those at the Y and we will train staff and we'll upgrade our insights so we can uh, determine the clients that um, would like to be helped. Same question, is there a match on this one? There is no match for this. And we're not adding any money, correct? There is no money involved for, <laughs> for the UG on this. Move for approval. Second. second. Motion and second, please call the roll. Aye. 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 And yet another grant application for item number four regarding the Enroll Wyandotte Project. There's no match for this. <laughs> <laughs> Great. <laughs> All the paper now. <laughs> You are learning so fast. <laughs> Thank you very much. Basically, this will give us someone to uh, provide the uh, uh, coordination for our enroll in uh, the uh, Affordable Care Act. And so we had health department staff doing that this year, and this will provide somebody to follow that through, do education, do the coordination of the volunteers this time. So we hope we get this. No, no money. Second. <laughs> Roll call. Roll call. Aye. 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 And for item number five, yet another <coughs> grant application regarding a document imaging program. Yes, this is a $21,000 grant. It does have a 10% cash match. <laughs> so for $2,100 more or less than... Uh, uh, we need to upgrade our software, and um, Insight is our medical records application. We need to um, uh, get that upgraded and uh, with a data, data imaging program, and that's what we want to buy with this money. Move for approval. Second. Roll call. Roll call. Bill Brewer. Aye. 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 Walker. Aye. Aye. Thank you so Thank much, you. and you had a good inaugural meeting, a whole list of them there. <laughs> I wish the other guy could. Oh. <laughs> I see how this is going. Great. Our last item on our agenda tonight is um, a discussion of signed ordinance amendments. Uh, Commissioner Walker worked uh, fairly extensively on this, so I think he will certainly have some comments for us, and we have staff here um, to <coughs> discuss the legal and uh, practical aspects as well. So. Um, Commissioner Walker, would you like to start or would you like staff to go first? I'll start. Great. I prepared an ordinance that was somewhat more extensive than the one that came back in that it also addressed some other aspects. But what was important uh, to me, and I should, uh, and before I go on, I'll make full disclosure. Prior to me being a commissioner, I did have a legal matter hired by CBS Viacom in which I learned uh, to my dismay that these type of digital sign boards uh, are not legal in Kansas City, Kansas. Now, I, I am not an advocate for more billboards. Uh, let me be clear about that. But I do per personally prefer digital sign boards to 
static face or single uh, face or double face uh, bellboard. So in looking at it, a number of years ago we had some litigation when we imposed a tax on uh, signboards and uh, we were involved primarily with Lamar and CBS uh, Viacom. There may have been another uh, signboard company involved at that time, but uh, ultimately it dragged on so long that they basically could not afford to continue funding the lawyers or didn't want to continue funding the lawyers so they kind of gave up and went away um, but on the table at that time was a was a deal and we couldn't get everybody to agree to it and uh, the deal was that for every digital signboard that was approved, a company would agree to remove some factor. Now, it's been drafted here tonight equal to, I think it should at least be twice as much. Um, with the intent being that if you look on most of the signboards in the community, especially in the urban core, the smaller derelicts that are, you know, once in a while somebody will put something up on them. Uh, they are, uh, they're blight. They're, they need to go. But they're never going to go because they might make, they don't have to do anything to maintain it. And so they simply, you know, when they can sell a few hundred bucks worth of advertising, they do it. Now, with this ordinance, the intent is to, you want a digital board and it meets all the requirements for the location, etc., the Highway Beautification Act and whatnot, um, then you need to take down a certain number of square foot of other boards. Now, at the time, there was also the debate of, well, who gets to choose? And, you know, I don't really want to get involved in that. Most of them are in the, the first, the second, and the third, and the third, and maybe a few in the sixth district. Uh, mostly out west, they don't, they're not that small. But still, those could come down as well where opportunity presented itself to, to do so. It, to me, Bonner has them, Edwardsville has them, uh, Merriam has them, Shawnee has them, just about everybody around has got them but us. And I think they're a lot more aesthetically pleasing <laughs> than others and I can't think of any other way to get rid of these uh, small billboards except through condemnation and paying out large sums of money. Now I had requested a provision in here that if they didn't have any boards to trade that we would assess a certain amount of money uh, and I don't care what that amount is. I don't know what economically makes sense. I, I had suggested a hundred thousand dollars. That may be too high. I think whatever amount we need to fund the future sign ordinance study <laughs> would be a great amount. Well, of that or we would, <laughs> use, or we would. Uh, my hope would have been that we dedicate that money. We're not very good at keeping our dedications of money the way they're dedicated, but that we would use that money to acquire and take down other derelict billboards throughout the community. And I'm sure there was a time when these small billboards and when the city limits ended at 38th Street. There were no interstates. These were great advertising mediums, but I think anybody in the business would tell you nobody bills these anymore. So that's why this part of my proposal is before you tonight. Now, we're going to do a sign study, but I did not want my billboard issue to get tangled up in a what could be a year-long process. So... <coughs> Yeah. Thank, thank you, Commissioner. Um, Ken and Patrick and I have been working on this together, and I thought I'd start out tonight with a little bit of statistical data just related to the signs. And this came off our GIS system. I haven't had a chance to verify all of it with Phil Henderson based on our current um, license to occupation tax receipts. But we have about 23 very small boards, and those would be 72 square feet and under. So those are real small. I mean, it's less than a sheet of, well, a couple sheets of plywood. Um, there, so that total square footage of those signs would be 
uh, about 1,700 square feet approximately. So if you have a, <coughs> a 14 by 48 that's about 600 square feet, you know, if you did three of those, if Lamar or CBS chose to do three, then that would eliminate pretty much all those boards if we use that two times the, or even a single square footage factor. Mm -hmm. um, Lamar and CBS together own about 94, 95 signs in our community, and they own all but one of what I would consider the small signs. Um, the, we also have uh, another uh, 44 signs that are 300 square feet or less, and so those would be the half size signs. Um, and I don't know if those are really the ones that are at issue or not. Possibly they are. Um, sometimes there's a couple of little ones stacked together. Um, locationally, all of those smaller boards, 300 square feet and under, are kind of inside the 635 loop, um, so to speak. Um, so there might be more of those out there if you take that, those 44 that are the 300 square foot most of them are 300 square foot. You know, it would take a little bit longer to get through those to, to replace them. But I think if we're to prioritize, the little bitty ones are the ones that really never have anything on them. And then as they get bigger, they, they get a little bit more attention because it's worthwhile to somebody to do those. Um, the, uh, so that, that is kind of where we came up with the issue of, well, we can't really trade because we do have... Um, about 13 other companies that own boards that don't have small signs to trade. Um, we could probably figure out what a market rate per square foot of sign cost is. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if, I mean, obviously per square foot, the little ones aren't worth nearly what the big ones are. They would be leased a lot. I don't know which one we should use to offset that. And quite frankly, um, Ad Trend, which is a local KC company, has three signs, and Martin Outdoor, which is a large national company, has four signs. Eleven others have one or two that they control, and um, quite frankly, those eleven might be controlled by Lamar or CBS. I just couldn't find documentation of that, and I didn't call the companies to find out. So we might have a, a workable situation there. We have to come up with a fee and what you think is reasonable on a per square foot if they don't have one to put in the actual code. Um, and I think Patrick and Ken may have a um, commentary on how we make that happen. Um, we separated the, <coughs> in Commissioner Walker's original document, um, we also he also addressed the issue of the church electronic message, message centers, the, the the, those signs. Quite frankly, our code has unconstitutional issues in it, and that would add to it because it it, it speaks to a specific type of speech, and that's one of the things that the courts have said are unconstitutional. Now, it may be no worse than what we have now, but if it's not a pressing issue, we would rather wait and and consider that with the rest of a sign code amendment. Um, well, the intent, the intent there was, uh, if we said non-for-profit, uh, you know, non-for-profit is not necessarily a 501c3. And so I wanted to differentiate if they were exempt under the, the Internal Revenue Service Code, which clearly is done by the federal government, they should be eligible for the monument sign. Mm -hmm. Now, maybe that requires further investigation as to how broad that would be. My idea was that you know, the public library in Strong Avenue ought to be able to have a monument sign. Churches with a, you know, a message of their activities uh, during the week should be able to have them. Um, that's just my opinion. Uh, schools, some do, but some have static. And, and my impression is, is that it is quite an ordeal to go through for these organizations to get the approval to ultimately do that. Now, maybe there's a reason that I'm not understanding. I just think public library ought to be able to have a message board that says what authors are there or what, you know, events are there, and we they shouldn't have to come up here and spend $3,000 for lawyers and fees and go through the whole planning process in order to do that. But 
that's another issue from the billboard. Right. The billboard issue, I mean, and my fellow commissioners, you speak on whatever you want, when, is that if, if these things are economically driven, my target is the small boards. But if you make it twice the size, then a, a company that has two static face boards is going to, uh, that are your, what we would all think of as a regular billboard alongside the road, you're going to have to decide whether the economics of keeping those two boards is outweighed by uh, the economics of the digital board. I don't have that knowledge. But if you want a digital board, then take down two of your big signs. I'm not particularly concerned about where they take them down. I mean, I think my intent is is that they're going to give up the ones that don't make any money first. But if it gets to the point where the idea was, if you take twice as much every time they put up one of those things, you're you're taking down two billboards of equal size to replace it. And yes, they get six messages a minute, but those things cost. What quarter million dollars still, Rob? Or are they cheaper now? I, I don't know. I'm, I'm sure they're cheaper now. When they first went up, they were pushing a million, and they were still make, so apparently still making money. The money with that, angle so. on it, there has to be a lot of money in being able to do six ads a minute uh, for them to put up a million dollars. I think it's cheaper now, but yeah, still, let's say it's a half million. That that's a lot of investment, and how much do they? You know, you know more about the market rates than I do on a static single face board, but. Uh, I can think of locations where I'd rather have one of those digital boards sitting on a hill looking over I-35 or 18th Street than what, what's there right now. Yeah. So, if, if, oh, you know, we just took down the woodland sign. And, and you know, you're, you're coming across from the Missouri side, heading to the legend, you see this big nothing, this, this statue of nothing. And it, yet it still took forever to get it taken down and, and uh, which is frustrating on my part. But, Commissioner Walker, I th this is like a two-phase thing. This is the first phase that we're going through right now with the second phase where they've got to clean it up a little bit and tell us how much it would cost and what the expense would be to the other folks. Is, is that correct? Well, I, I think that if you don't have a board to trade, then, you, then you, you, you pay to play. And I don't know what the right number is because I'm sure they're going to cry at $100,000, but... I can't imagine how long it takes to make $100,000 off of six big name ads every minute, 24 hours a day for 30 days. So I don't know. I think that the, maybe what you're getting to is the idea is we would deal with this piece of the ordinance, but then Rob, I think secondarily, after we get through this discussion, is going to ask about doing a full sign ordinance review about all the different signs, and that's what would cost us money. So. Um, Commissioner Walker, as this is presented right now, is this what you want, this particular? I would like it to have twice the square footage uh, of removal, and I would like for those that have no small boards to give up or cry that they can't give up any boards, that there be a reasonable fee. Now, I don't know that a thousand is reasonable, but... Well, can we... Uh we would Add those amendments to this and we, make that We determine suggestion? the amount of money on all our fees, Commissioner, I believe, by administration. Each year the administration sets the cost of a permit at the park or a boat slip or whatever it might be. It would be my assumption that in the absence of us at this time having any specific knowledge that that would be a market-driven determination. So we can include your suggestions along with this. Yes. And move that we move and go that well, we move forward with this. I would like well, to move forward. I, well, you, this goes to planning commission before it comes back to you. So right. we were we really we wanted to make sure we had a good draft before we went to the planning commission. So I mean that's why this is on the agenda tonight as a discussion because I don't think that you all I mean we're obviously listening to you but I don't think you need to take a vote on this okay. tonight. Is yeah, that we but we do, Matt, but he does have those recommendations yeah, we, we that we would like you to listen to. Yes, we can consider this a working draft where we wanted to get your feedback tonight. Um, th there was one other issue that I thought of, the issue of how long the term on the special use permits would be, mm -hmm. is an issue that we wanted to discuss. We've heard various terms 
thrown out and if there was any um, feedback from well, the commission. Or, or if they even needed a new special use permit. If it's an existing special use sign with an existing special use permit, do we want to go through the brain damage again? Because, I mean, <coughs> you, you all know where the planning staff is going to be when we come forward on these things. And yes, I, I, we do. <laughs> and I, I don't know that any of us want to go through that necessarily if we don't have to. I don't think it'd be fair to them if we, if we changed it midstream. Yeah, because no, we're not, we're simply, well, I mean, obviously, if it's a new location, they've got to go through the right. whole process anyway. Mm -hmm. I I do not feel like that we should ever give a billboard permit for less than 10 years. And, and my, personally. Now, yeah. Others may think differently, but every two years is, is an absurd burden on the cost of doing business. And my only question to Hal on that is, how, what is the lifespan of that type of billboard? Because my concern was if the lifespan of the billboard is only five years and then it's going to start looking ratty, then I don't want to give them a 10-year permit and risk having them after five years stop maintaining it. So I don't know if there's a way to answer that question. But for me personally, I, I agree with how that two years is too short, but I want to know how long does the board last? Because I think, the, to me, those things should align in some way so that we don't end up with the ratty billboard we can't get rid of for five more years. Right. And I, I have heard that there's, like, a, like on the ones that churches do, there's, like, a five-year warranty. But I think that once they put up a digital billboard, if it's successful enough that they're going to keep paying the electric bill on it, they will maintain that. I mean, we have some research that shows that a sign that in another community that might have made 300000 in a year when they went digital made $3 million in a year. So, I mean, that's a huge increase in the profit. In the, in the, I don't know what the cost to them are, but the revenue side is, is a lot better. So, you know, that I don't know how to balance that, but, you know, I think the other thing is that if technology changes in 10 years <clears throat> and you can do it with half the electricity and, it works better and it's more efficient. I mean, they're going to they're going to update those as it comes along. I mean, the first board that went up in Kansas City, I think, was like at 103rd and 435. Um, kind of, there's a church there on the south side, that, and it went as a really tall board, um, just because it was set in the valley and had to get up to the interstate level. But you know, that board's been up and operational, and it's had issues, but it, they've they've kept it going. There isn't many maintenance issue with it, and I think you know. Lamar and CBS are big enough they're going to maintain those. If, if you got some, <coughs> you know, if one of us owned a board and it had problems and our, it wasn't in a revenue stream, I might worry about that. But uh, with the big, the big four here that, you know, comprise, you know, what, 90% of the boards, I don't think that would be an issue. But And we, ha we have maintenance standards already <coughs> right. in the code. That's and true. we could maybe tweak those a little bit just to clarify that those apply to the digitals as well. Well, am I correct? I don't want to get too far off of what will be. If I, want, if I own a billboard and I want to replace the pole, as I read our ordinance, I've got to get a new special use permit to replace the pole. It's confusing enough, Rob, that if I can point to you right now you know, off of Minnesota Avenue, a board that needs a new pole, they will not do because they will not get a special use permit renewed for that location. And they know that that pole is bad. But they read, and I do too, that to do that, they've got to get a special use permit. So I'm having a hard time between what's defined in that for future reference as routine maintenance and something greater. Okay? It's, it's, it's and, not quite so the way, the way that's typically gone is that um, the little boards are a whole different animal. The big boards, they've gone through the trouble to put in and get a permit and get it, put a single pole in instead of the old, you know, they used to have eight I-beams and then there were six I-beams and there were four I-beams and now they're a single pole. And so I, th I think pretty much all of the big bowl boards except a couple along I-35 have gone to single pole. I know CBS had one that got hit by something and it bent one of the stanchions. Well, it didn't take out all of it, and they were they just went back in and repaired it. Um, I can do. I'll have to do more research on that because I really don't know. You know, with a billboard on Minnesota Avenue, what 
what their real replacement is and what they're doing. Most, of, you know, a lot of them are just stuck on the side of a building. Well, in that particular case, the issue is uh, the side face would not be changed, but the structural support would be. And and some of that goes into nonconformities, and it it gets really technical zoning. And I, I would it's almost a case by case evaluation. We can do that if you'd like, but I think if we come up with a system where they're going to go ahead and we think that they'll take advantage and remove those, then that might be a better solution than. And when you take this, the, the input from the commissioners to the to the planning commission, will you uh, notify in some way all of the billboard companies of the proposal? Um, I, I I mean I don't know the smaller ones you mentioned. Obviously CBS and. I think that I would probably use our license tax database for that because it's the most current. Okay. And I, if anybody had a billboard, I would I could use that. I don't know. Like I said, it may be that there's just four. I mean, there aren't very many singletons out in the billboard industry anymore, unless <clears throat> a guy had a deal with a Chevy dealer for 20 years and you know they put that up. But I think there's a few companies that build them and get them permitted, right. and find locations, and then flip them to Lamar. Right, or to CBS. That's and very. I that is very common. They've come in and gotten a permit over the years, and then not too long after that, it's a Lamar board. Right. Um. Other question. Are there other questions about specifically the digital part, and then we'll turn it over to Rob to talk more about the general, Commissioner Matta. Well, I don't. I don't have questions about the general part. My question was more so centered around if I'm a billboard owner, or if there's a person that owns a billboard. What what's in place that makes them stay in compliance? With is there is there a code in place that says if your board looks like this, you're fined, or is it or is there anything like that that's in place that they have to comply with? Yes, Commissioner, that's found under. Let's see if I can find the number. It's twenty seven seven thirty seven subsection F, and it does have maintenance requirements. Um, and it states that if it's not reasonably maintained for a period of three months, then it's essentially considered abandoned, and we can start taking actions against the property owner. So um, that applies to the static billboards. That would apply in to any possible future digital billboards as well. All right, but it, but that that applies not just to billboards. That applies to all signs. And when we go to enforce that. We have to do that uniformly and equitably and equally across the community, which is, that is a huge issue. Right. Didn't, didn't I hear you say that they put something up there for a little two months and just to be in compliance so they don't have to take it down? No. Uh, they, they, if you look at them, it's hard to imagine what they've done in the last three months to make sure it's, a, it's maintained. Okay. Right. Okay. Because that in Minnesota is a perfect example right. there at the corner. Okay. Well, that's that's a, a god awful ugly board. Well, that's a concern. I agree about that board too, but that's a concern for me because across my district, I do have various boards that are outdated, and I don't know if someone own, owns them or have they just been left to, left to sit. Okay. So I I too appreciate you actually putting this ordinance together that somehow will help us get into compliance with with the boards in the city. One of the problems I I foresee is so when somebody owns it, it's it's almost like you know, taking someone's home in the sense that you have, they're not going to take it down voluntarily because there's a cost to it. And we're not, we don't want to take it down because we don't have the funds, a resource revenue stream that will pay for them to be taken down. So they sit in limbo until there is some kind of a project in that area that justifies the inclusion of the removal as part of the project. Well, I've got some art students in my district. And they like to use spray paint can. They'll make it look real nice if we don't do something about it. Okay, you're not suggesting that we uh, start a land bank of uh, signs, are you? Uh, no. Okay, good. Thank you. No. Great. Rob, can you talk, um, uh, so I guess let's bring that part to a conclusion. Are, are, are we sending I forward I think so. yes. to the Planning Commission with this commission's um, recommendations the proposal for the digital billboards? And then, Mr. Richardson, please talk to us about an overhaul of the sign ordinance and what that would look like. Well, most of our zoning codes, sign 
ordinance included were adopted at some point in the 1970s. Some of them are relics from before that. And we've updated some parts of it. In 2004, we updated our, our administrative section of that, kind of the how-to part of the zoning code, how to proceed through the zoning process. Um, we've done some minor uh, amendments. The overlay zone was also done in the 2004 time frame for the design standards. Um, but the laws, particularly related to signs, not so much related to the rest of how we um, administer the zoning code, but particularly related to signs. There's been a lot of action in the Supreme Court since the time that those were adopted. And I think it's fair to say most of that revolves around um, distinguishing between different types of speech. Um, commercial speech, non-commercial speech, political speech. Anything else you add to that? I can say that. So, um, and we haven't ever had anybody really challenge us on any on the way we do this. We're fair in how we administer the codes, and I don't think anybody's come to us with a real um, problem with it. But there there are some good examples, like the the blue highway boards that tell you McDonald's. You know, they're like the you know where they five by ten boards say McDonald's, Wendy's, whoever else is at the next exit, Conoco, BP. Hotel, Motel 6, all the, those boards. So the state of Kansas authorizes a company to use their right-of-way for that. It's not the state of Kansas. And those are technically probably off-site advertising signs that are not legal under our code. But that company got no permits and asked no permission to put those into our community. Not that they're bad, but we don't address that. We don't address um, the, this issue between not-for-profits, if you say not-for-profits can have this, is that we don't, I don't know if that separates commercial and non-commercial speech to an extent that would be a constitutional violation. But a lot of, there, are, there are several companies around the country that do sign codes. They have written them, they've been tested, and they kind of know how people use the sign code and, and how that would best work for us once they sit down and talk to us. And so I would propose that we would um, do an RFP, request proposals for folks to um, work on our sign code and develop a, a, a new sign code that would be constitutional and serve the needs of our community, possibly be shorter and easier to understand, um, and um, to look at our fee structure for, for signs. I mean, we don't have any sign permit, I think that's over 100 bucks. And some of them take more staff time than that. Um, one, one thought I had to help the not-for-profits part of this would be that we could, um, or you could recommend to the administrator that the not-for-profits not, for not be charged a sign fee in our community. That way they would, you know, that would help reduce that either for a special use permit or, you know, you could say no zoning fees for them for that matter. That would, that would get them out of the special use permit cost, get them out of the sign fee cost. Um, and there might be other issues related to that, but that is one way that we could, with this, you know, in the next budget cycle, help that part of our community because, you know, there's, it's not just signs. The green markets have to pay $350 special use permit fee, too, because that's where they fall under. But, you know, there's, there's several issues like that around. But I, I really think that it's not something that we should go in and try and fix this piece or this piece or this piece of the sign code. I think our basic... District regulations are probably okay, but there's it's the um, special types of signs and, and things like that that really get us into um, deeper issues. And, and uh, Patrick has worked with the sign code a little bit as well. I don't know if you have any other commentary on that or not. No, I just I think it's a good recommendation. Um, it's actually it's going to be a topic at our next city attorney's meeting, so it's something on the mind of many municipalities. Um, something that I think the time is right to be addressed. And, and it's a it'll be at the National Planning Conference. It'll, there'll be several sessions on signs, and you know there's there's two sign groups. There's the billboard companies, and there's the people that hate billboards. And so they all have data out there, and it's a matter of sifting through. <coughs> who, you know, some people do their sign code based on how fast the traffic is, because if you allow somebody to have a sign of a certain size, but the traffic is 50 miles an hour, you can't read it, and it becomes dangerous because you got to you know, focus on it longer to see it. And so there are some sign codes that are based on the speed of the traffic, which 
I actually think is a good thing. It makes it, it will be miserable to administer and it will be confusing, but it would be a better end result for us. Um, but those are the things I think we ought to look for when we move into the uh, doing a sign code. And as you know, when I talked to you all before, there were many other issues related to planning and zoning that were on the list, master planning in different parts of the community as well as the sign code. Um, and um, I guess I'm hearing from this group that the sign code might be at the top of your list for those um, revisions to be made. Because I haven't had any direction from do you. Do you, do you have a time frame? I mean, what if we tonight as a committee direct the, a motion or approve a motion directing the administration to proceed forthwith with an RFP for this, then it would, we don't need to go to the planning commission to do this. Not, not to do the sign code, no. They, the, if you, you know, the RFP process, it would eventually go through them because it's part of the zoning yeah. code. But when to do that, no. And, um, you know, if this is an eighty, hundred thousand, hundred twenty thousand 120000 dollar effort, I don't have a budget for that at this moment either. So that's another issue with that. Well, I mean, yeah, right. We're building the budget now. Right. I, mean, I would like to see this done before my term's up. Oh, that's... I mean, you know, right? I, I, yes. It's simply a matter of we we bog a lot of things down in, in process, and so moving moving this forward because clearly the things you've identified have been problems for a long time. Banner signs have been illegal for years, but there was no will or political capital. Uh, to make everybody take down their banner sign on their bar or their restaurant or their liquor store, and it, it, is it a good thing that we do that or is it a bad thing? I don't, I don't know. It doesn't bother me, but it bothers some people. So, do banner you, signs on churches. Do you when need? Those down? I, I don't, but uh, so yeah, we need. I would like to see us move forward on this and. Get, give him some direction and have something come up to the next com commission meeting that we do something so that we're not sitting here a year from now waiting to get a report. Well, that's my question: Is does this need to come to the next? Does this need a motion here and to go to the commission meeting, or is it going to come to us in budget for for our budgeting purposes? Or do you, are you looking to do the RFP now and budget it for 2015, or is that all going to happen as we Well, I think that it what. It would have to be budgeted either a revision to the 2014 budget would which would take effect in august or something new in the 2015 budget um, once we do the rfp that process usually takes six to eight weeks so a couple of months and i think that the process for doing the, the sign code itself would probably be six to nine ten months somewhere in there probably more in the nine to ten month range to get it done because we will want to go out and talk to all of our community groups you know we have several business related community groups the NBRs we have uh, other um, community groups that might have discussion about how we I think one of the big things is transition creating are we going to create new nonconformities are we going to say the people that have the illegal stuff up now you have a certain amount of time to take it down or we will I mean those are some issues that I think need a broader community discussion to give policymakers um, some idea of what the community out there is really thinking and would go for in that. I know some communities, and we may need to do some of this by overlay zone in different parts of the community because um, the Minnesota Avenue, Central Avenue area is different than Village West and probably should be administered differently. And so we may need to look in, in those kind of issues. So I, I, it's going to take us a while to get through that process, but you've got three years left. Is that right? We'll, we'll be done before that. God willing, I, yeah. <laughs> Three years. Well, then you could be reelected too. But we'll, before your first term is up, that should be that. Uh, be, be, uh, well, I'm glad you're sure about that. That, but, uh, that doesn't yeah, give you good. permission to wait for eight years. <laughs> right. I, I understand that. But what I'm saying is that I think that this process, even if it started in 2015, I, I wasn't sure when your term ended. I'm sorry. That may have been. No, oh, I understand. I'm just saying. I, I'm, I've seen a lot of things. 
you know, I, I wouldn't say that you have done this or Jody or Ken, but, you know, staff can kill a project because I killed a few in my day with <laughs> just letting them just sit there and do nothing. This is one we wanted to do. This is something we want to do, and you want to do it, and we need to help you find the money or figure out when we're going to do it. But when we start it, we want, I don't want a, you know, yeah. a belabored process. Okay, so I don't know if my question got answered. Do you need us to do something for you tonight, or should we just expect to see this in the budget? Well, <laughs> I will, I will talk with the administration about budget part. I think it, okay. because it needs to be budgeted. Because yeah. I don't think there's money right now for that. So I think right. it needs to come through the budget process. But I think we've got clear direction now that we want to see you, this standing committee wants to see that as part of the budget. And I guess one question would be revision of 2014 or 2015 while we're having a conversation about this. The more direction we get, the better off we are. I don't personally have a preference, but. Well, I, I, I'm going to make a motion mm -hmm. that, that we um, direct administration to proceed with the sign revision RFP with all due speed and when funds are made available either by commission action or administration action. That clear as mud? Second. 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 <laughs> Roll call. <laughs> Roll call. Bill Brooks? Aye. Okay. Aye. Aye. Walker? Aye. Aye. So what you have now is at least the endorsement of the committee that we want this thing done now. What we need is for administration to come back and say, we don't have any money until 2015, and here's when we'll start, and or we can do it this August. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. Either way. But there's no mistaking that we want it done. Thanks, guys. Anything else? Then we are adjourned. Thank you for attending. Yeah. Go ahead.